Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you are returning, what's up squad? Hey guys, so first and foremost, I want to say a big thank you, a very big thank you to all of um, the new subscri subscribers on the channel. Um, I released the June monthlies and they really did very, very well and it um, brought a lot of new people into the into the club, yeah? <laughs> so I just wanna say a big thank you, give you all a big shout out, and I wanna say a big thank you to all of the all of my returning subscribers, all the people that have been following me on this journey. You guys are really, really awesome. I honestly don't know <laughs> what I would do without you guys. Um, so uh, this is a Twin Flame weekly conversation. Um, and with that in mind, I also want to give another huge thank you to everybody that's been, you know, walking this path with me. There are a lot of us on this journey. Um, there are a lot of us that have been on this journey for a very long time. And there are a lot of new people that are becoming aware of the journey. Um, and it's really great um, to have people here that understand what we're all going through and we can all communicate with each other about it and not feel so freaking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so there are a few things that I want to talk about first uh, in regards to these, this, this journey. That someone that I have done a reading for and have been communicating with and has been following me um, reached out a few days ago and asked about, you know, feeling, these feelings that she was having about, you know, whether or not someone the, who um, she thought or thinks is her twin is actually her twin. Um, and that is something I feel like a lot of us are going through, especially those of us who have been on this journey for a while now. I have really only been um, aware of the Twin Flame dynamic and the Twin Flame journey since... I want to say last November. It was around when Melanie from Whole Again 1111 had just started her channel. She was one of the first people that I started watching. And I honestly, I, I want to say it was her channel that um, helped me understand what the F was going on with me. Okay. Because I had, I mean, I, um, you know, I, I went through a, a divorce um, and that started around July of last year. Like I, the separation process started and I was having all of these experiences surrounding this one person that I had come across. Um, and I didn't really understand it until I guess, I guess I want to say it was, I reached, uh, or I found Melanie's channel because she started describing things and telling the story of, you know, what is going on, on the path, on the journey. And it, and I, I'll say it was between Melanie's channel and maybe some other videos that I had seen at the time. Um, but it was describing everything I was going through. And so that's when I realized that I was on this journey. Um, and so, and then I started my channel here on YouTube in January. Um, but for many of us that have been on this for some time and have been under the impression that a certain person is our twin, we are going through a period right now where we're really questioning that. Um, Things have changed. There have been a lot of shifts, a lot of energetic shifts. I know things feel very different for me now. Um, it doesn't feel the way that it used to. It doesn't, it's not bad. You know, there's still love. There's still unconditional love. It's just, it's like there has been this energetic separation, um, this energetic pullback. And I'll definitely say that, you know, I have pulled back my energies in, in certain ways. Now, I'm not exactly sure um, if that's through resentment, if that's being, if that's just me being fed up. Um, but I have kind of wanted to just like pull my energies away and focus on myself. Okay. And just focus on directing that energy towards myself instead of, um, directing so much of it at this person that I've been under the impression is my twin. Um, uh, twin flame. No, I'm sorry, uh, Indigo Moon's Healing. She used to be called Indigo Moon's Twin Flamed Healing, and now she has changed her name to Indigo Moon Healing. Uh, uh, yeah, um, she put out a video stating that there are a lot of people who have been under the impression that someone was their twin, and even the universe was kind of confirming it in ways, you know, to help keep pushing us forward. But now that we've reached this certain point, we're actually strong enough to face the fact that this certain person we've been under the impression is our twin, 
may actually not be our twin. Um, and that's kind of what I've been going through. Um, <laughs> and I, I will say that a lot of, I'm feeling like a lot of us that are going through this, that are feeling the same energy, the similar energies, are experiencing this because we are really in serious detachment mode. Um, I know for me it got to, a, I, I, was, I was actively working on accepting the fact and coming to terms with the fact that one, I may never see this person again, two, I may never speak with him again, um, three, we may never even reach physical union. And I feel like for those of us that are really feeling this energy of, or, or questioning whether or not someone is our twin or not, um, or at least this specific person, are feeling this because we're really in a detachment, a serious detachment phase. And now this is not a bad thing. It really is not a bad thing. I know it's painful. It's definitely painful. It's been quite painful, quite heartbreaking for me, um, especially since, you know, I've been having so much, so much energetic and psychic experiences surrounding this one person. Um, and now to all of a sudden be, be in this mind, this headspace of, well, maybe he was a catalyst. Um, and that's actually something I want to talk about too. Maybe he was a catalyst. Maybe he was a karmic. Um, that's heartbreaking. And I don't want anyone to shy away from experiencing that. That is absolutely something. If that is coming up for you, uh, I, I, I'm not saying that everybody's resonating with this. All the people that I'm connecting with, all the people that connect with my channel, you may not be experiencing this, but I know a good amount of us are. Um, and I don't want to discourage you from experiencing this or, or at least allowing this thought, thought, allowing yourself to flow through this thought process because ultimately it will help. Um, it will help you detach. It'll help you release expectations of how things should happen, when things should happen, if they will ever happen, if they were ever, it will ever happen at all. Excuse me, I couldn't get that one out. Um, and I feel like that was for a reason. It was hard for me to get that out there, that last sentence, because this is in fact going to happen <laughs> for a lot of us. If not all of us, that was, that was what the universe has just said. Um, now, as, as far as a catalyst goes, I was very much in the process of coming to terms or at least understanding whether or not this person was a catalyst for me. Um, and Brittany from Enlightened Soul, hey Brittany, <laughs> love you. Um, she put out a video talking about, you know, explaining what a catalyst or a, a karmic is. Um, and there is a story that I would like to share about my personal experience that really kind of put, once I watched that video that Brittany put out there, it put a lot of into, a lot into perspective for me. Um, I encourage you guys to go watch that video, especially if, if you haven't already, but especially if you are resonating with this part of the message or this part of the journey, um, this current energetic reality. Um, I would, ex uh, encourage you to watch it because it really helped put a lot into perspective for me, okay? So she says that a catalyst is someone that gets you into um, an awareness um, and just starts you on some sort of ascension process, okay? It's not really anything too serious at the time. Um, and then as you move forward, you come into contact with your actual twin and then the ascension process really excels. Like at that point, you start really getting into unconditional love, you start getting into service to others, you start getting into your mission work, you start doing the things that really put you on your own, your your personal spiritual path. So for me, that was, so okay, so I had an experience, I wanna say three or maybe even four years ago now, where I came into contact with someone um, that completely lit me up, like totally lit me up. Um, and you know, I tried to go through the divorce process and then, you know, other things came into to play that halted the divorce process, but also, um, you know, it, it, um, it got me started on ascending, really ascending, like, um, focusing on my mental health, focusing on my physical health, um, in, in new ways focusing on my own personal authenticity and what truly makes me happy and what I really want to be doing in life. Um, and I went through that for about two years. Um, that was around the time that I was diagnosed bipolar and I started dealing with that. And, you know, I, I was in therapy for a while and I even started to go on medication for it a little bit. And then, um, and then, you know, 
Oh, by the way, you guys might be hearing music. Uh, it is a beautiful sunny day here in New York City and people are outside, you know, playing music, having a great time, even doing a, having a barbecue. So if you hear that, I apologize for the distraction, but um, people got to live their lives, right? <laughs> okay. So anyway, back to the story. Um, so then, so, okay, I was dealing with like mental health and all that. And then I really came to a period where, you know, I was like, I really, this marriage that I was in at the time was not right for me. Um, and I started to understand, I really started to understand the fact that the more I stayed in that marriage, the more of a disservice I was doing to myself, not only myself, but to my husband at the time, because um, I understood that I couldn't necessarily give him exactly what he wanted in a relationship. And I thought it was unfair to him to stay um, knowing that. Okay. So that's when I really was like, okay, fine. I need to, I need to do this. I got to bite the bullet and just move forward. And then I met this, well, I had already met him, but then I reconnected with this person who at this point moment in time, um, I have been under the impression is my twin. Now I didn't know it at the time. Um, I felt this insanely deep connection. There was all kinds of stuff happening energetically and psychically for me that was just like out of control. Like it was nothing I had ever experienced before. Um, and it really propelled me forward. It propelled me towards, you know, getting out of the, the relationship I was in at the time. And <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really telling you guys a pretty personal story here, but it, 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 it I'm, I'm telling this story because I am trying to help us. I'm trying to relate. I'm trying to give you guys some sort of, um, something to fall back on so that, you know, you can maybe relate, piece some things together for yourselves. But, um, I, you, <laughs> at the time I was thinking, well, if things don't work out with this other person, then I'm grateful for the fact that he really just helped me helped push me towards getting on with my life, so to speak. Um, and so then, um, I started, I was, I was already watching videos on YouTube at the time, tarot readings and all that. And that's when I came across twin flame readings. And this was around November of last year. And that's when I realized that I was a twin flame, or at least I started to believe I was because everything I was hearing was describing my path. I mean, obviously it wasn't specifically, um, you know, it wasn't that specific because it, they were general readings, but like every, I mean, it was just all the main pieces, the runner chaser phage, the telepathy, the, the deep, deep, profound emotions, like being, falling madly in love with someone that you don't even know, like physically, you know what I mean? But like in the 3d, but then ultimately, you know, you had past lives with these people. So you really, you, there's this sense of knowing them, but you, in, but like in life, you really don't know them from Adam or Eve. Um, so that's when I started taking the advice and the advice was to, you know, start doing, getting back to who you are, doing the things that are fulfilling for you, finding, figuring out what it is your, what your mission is and everything. And, um, I really started getting into the deep, the deep process of ascent, of ascension and enlightenment and really working on my spirituality. I had been working on spirituality for damn near my whole life. Um, but it wasn't until this moment in time that things really really got going, like the gears really started moving. Um, and then shortly after that, I started doing tarot readings. And I was, again, I had been studying it for years, but I had never really done it for people out, um, you know, in public or like professionally or anything. I didn't feel comfortable enough. And it wasn't until I started really moving on this journey that my intuition really woke up. Um, I mean, it had, it had already started to, but it really like took a quantum leap up and I was com com confident enough to start channeling for people. And that's when I started my YouTube channel. So, um, after what Brittany had said in that video and I, I was looking at things and I started to realize that this one person who I now consider to be my twin, like really did it, like really like got me going in, in, in a way of service and being of service to people and using my spiritual gifts to help people. Okay. So that was a little bit of confirmation for me. Um, the one thing I do want to say about the person that came right before now, the person that came right before the one that I now consider my, to be my twin, that was a catalyst. Okay. Um, that person was a catalyst. He, he started 
the minor process of it and who I consider to be my twin now really got the major gears going. And I remember after I had, because when, when I was dealing with the person that was my catalyst, um, I, I had left, I had moved out, and then eventually I moved back. And I was out one day walking our dogs and I had this vision of me on fire. Um, and I started to cry. And I remember calling, you know, or I was texting my husband at the time, telling him about it, telling him about this experience I was having. And, and I remember saying to him that, uh, you know, I'm, I, I feel like a torch. I'm, I, I see myself on fire and all I want to do is help people, is be of service. I'm gonna cry right now. I'd be, be of service to people and, you know, just help and just help. And, and I didn't realize it until after I had watched this video that Brittany put out, um, that that was me that was my activation. That was me realizing I was a twin flame without really knowing what a twin flame was. Um, the twin flame journey is not necessary. Is not just about a romantic relationship. I mean, obviously, this this type of dynamic that we have going with these people that we consider to be our twins is not your typical romance. Okay, I mean, we all know that by now. Um, and if you're new to the journey, you're going to find out soon. Um, <laughs> Um, but it's, the, the journey is really about enlightenment. It's really about wholeness. It's about finding a uh, reconnecting with source and finding union within with source. And it's also about being of service. And that was the one thing that really stood out for me at that time. When I had that vision of myself being on basically on fire, I just, I had this insane, this deep desire to be of service to people. Um, and so fast forward to today and here we are <laughs> all right so that i mean i'm gonna drink some coffee but that's that's that guys you know everything everything is really lining up now i am really saying i, I i'm saying at this point that i really am there is still a lot of doubt that i'm dealing with there is still a lot of questioning that i'm having um it sucks <laughs> it's confusing it's this back and forth I, I, I don't know. I really don't even know what else to say about it. It's just, stay strong, yeah? Um, the one thing that I do, when I get in these to these periods of just being incredibly confused and not knowing which way to go, the best, absolute best thing to do is just reconnect with your heart and your higher self and allow your heart to speak with you. Allow your heart to tell you, you know, to guide you back to your knowingness. <sighs> So there's that. Um, so we'll see what the messages are that come through in the reading. Um, but I just, I really wanted to share that with you guys because it's beneficial for us. It's really helpful for us to share our stories. Now, I'm not encouraging anybody to go out there and put all kinds of personal information about other people that don't necessarily know what's going on, don't know that you're explaining things, blah, 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 blah. Like without their express permission, do not put their personal information out there. Now, if you want to share your side of the story um, in a respectful way without you know, revealing or outing people, I encourage people to do so because it helps us, okay? Especially if you're sharing your story with others that are vibing with you, that are connecting with you, it helps, okay? We need to be able to be transparent. We need to be able to be open to sharing our stories because that will help other people that are resonating with us that are that are on the same path okay all right so enough rambling because it has been 18 minutes <laughs> let's get into the reading so um again we're doing a mirror reading please take this as an opportunity to understand what's going on within your masculine and feminine energies within the balance of those energies within you will most likely be able to glean information about what's going on with your twin in the physical world. But ultimately, um, like I say all the time, please, please at least take some focus towards um, understanding your own internal balance because that is really the name of the game here. Other than service, you are meant to be coming into balance with your masculine and feminine energies within and finding union within and finding union with source, yes? Also, these readings are no longer going to be split up into union or separation or blah, 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 blah. Um, it is my intention to just put messages out there for anyone that is resonating with me that are, that are coming across these videos um, on my channel. Ultimately, we're all in union 
uh, and spiritually, okay? Um, so separation is an illusion, okay? Separation is an element of the three-dimensional reality. So just take, just, just, it's my intention to just bring messages for the Twin Flame Collective, whether you're in union or not, all right? It's a general reading, guys. So take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't, yeah? Okay, let's get into this. So I have my two decks here. We have the Tarot Apocalypsis deck on the left, which is symbolizing the Divine Masculine energies. And we have the Tarot Illuminati deck on the right, which is going to symbolize the Divine Feminine energies. And also, I have the Animal Spirit deck here, which is going to, uh, I'm going to pull a relationship spread from the Animal Spirits just to give us some greater clarity and some guidance. Yeah? Alrighty. So, I encourage everyone to settle in, take a deep breath. Um... And let's connect, yeah? Okay, so, Spirit. Hey, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages for the Twin Flames at this time. Please give us a clear and accurate representation of the Divine Masculine Energies, represented by the deck on the left, and the Divine Feminine Energies, represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how they are interacting with each other uh, individually and collectively. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, so I'm going to start by shuffling Divine Masculine and the uh, Divine Masculine deck. Um, I did do a pre-shuffle before I started the video, um, and you know, just to connect and pray a little bit and just get the energies flowing. And um, for the Divine Masculine. The Two of Swords in Reverse popped out. Okay, we had a flyer. We actually had flyers with both decks. <laughs> okay, so for the, for the Divine Masculine, the Two of Swords popped out, and it popped out in reverse. And um, that spoke about... Sorry, guys, I'm just channeling. I'm trying to channel the energies while talking at the same time. Maybe I should not do that. Divine Masculine... One more shuffle for the Divine Masculine. Okay, so let's cut the deck. So, um, yeah, the Two of Swords popped out in reverse. So that was that said to me that Divine Masculine Collective um, is in the state of not being indecisive anymore, okay? And then I looked at the bottom of the deck, and it was, in fact, the Ten of Pentacles. So that was saying to me that the Divine Masculine is coming to terms, or is coming to a period where he's no longer indecisive. Now, please understand, when I say he or she, I'm just talking about the energies, okay? I am a, I, I can, I am a, I'm a divine feminine, but I am male in gender, okay? You can be divine feminine and be male in gender. You can be a divine masculine and be female in gender. So please understand that when I say he or she, I am speaking of the energies, not gender. But the divine masculine collective is in the process or is in a period of um, no longer being indecisive and being very clear about what they want um, in their physical reality um, as their ultimate physical reality, what they want for a family life, a home life, um, what they, the type of experiences they want to have, the type of, uh, relate, uh, experience they want to manifest, um, within their physical reality, their ultimate physical, um, embodiment. Lord have mercy. So now we're getting into the divine feminine energies. Um, and we just had a flyer. I'll tell you about that in a second. But while I was shuffling the deck before, before I started the video, the Emperor popped up, upright. Um, and I looked at the bottom of the deck, but now I can't remember what, what was at the bottom of the deck for the Divine Feminine um, at that time. But it was the Emperor. And so the Divine Masculine was showing himself to the Divine Feminine. Um <laughs> <laughs> and he and he is saying right now, I'm coming to get you, <laughs> okay? We have a flyer that just popped out here for the Divine Feminine, and it is the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. Um, and what that's saying to me, oh, geez, and look at that. The Divine Masculine, the Emperor, is right at the bottom of the deck. So for the Divine Feminine, what this is saying, what the, what the Divine Masculine is saying to the Divine Feminine is just hold on, just wait a little longer, okay? This new start between us, gosh, I really wish I could remember what was at the bottom of the deck before. Because it was really, 
guess it doesn't matter now. But um, the Divine Masculine is saying to the Divine Feminine at this moment that this Ace of Pentacles, this new start is coming. You just have to wait a little bit longer, okay? Everything is coming into fruition, all right? Um, the, the, the Ace of Pentacles in reverse is just... I want to say it's a blockage, but it's not a blockage. It's just a hold on because it's coming, all right? Um, it's in the process of getting started. It's in the process of being planned. It's in the process of manifesting, which is why the Ace of Pentacles came out in reverse. It's in the process of manifesting. And that's why I didn't want, necessarily want to say it's blocked. It's not blocked. Again, it's just in the process of manifesting. Okay. So, Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine. Divine Feminine. There you are. Divine Feminine. All right, one more shuffle for you, Divine Feminine. We have another flyer here. Wow. Wowie wow. <laughs> we've got the Knight of... I'm not sorry. I'm sorry. The King of Wands. And we've got the King of Cups. Guys, these are upright. This is... The Divine Masculine is really coming through, okay? He's really coming through. I mean, change. Things are changing, guys. The Divine Masculine is really not confused anymore, not betwixt and bewildered, not in an indecisive mode. He's coming forward. He's accepting things. He's accepting reality. He's accepting... Wow. Wow. This is powerful. This is powerful, guys. All right. One, more, one last shuffle. I'm kind of starting to shake. Jeez. All right. So we have the Nine of Cups in reverse. This is, okay, the Nine of Cups is in reverse, and there are so many messages. I haven't even gotten to the spread yet, guys. So many messages are coming through. Um, and it's funny because Spirit was really pushing me to do this because they were saying there are some channeled messages that need to come through. So with the Nine of Cups in reverse and the King of Wands upright, um, the Nine of Cups in reverse is talking about a release of a false sense of wish fulfillment. Um understanding that some of the realities that the Divine Masculine has been um, experiencing, he's really coming to terms with the fact that it wasn't exactly what he wanted. Okay? It just wasn't. And he's understanding that now. All right. Okay, cool. So let's, let's get into the spread now. I'm going to give two more shuffles. For the Divine Feminine. One and two... All right, cool. <laughs> Finally, we're ready. And we're already a half hour in. Like, this is this is nuts, guys. Okay. All right, Divine Feminine, I'm starting with you. We've got the Page of Swords in reverse, okay? Um, so for the Divine Feminine, this is really talking about a release. Um... I literally just heard not stalking your divine masculine on social media anymore. <laughs> um, also, maybe not even being able to. Maybe you've blocked yourself. Maybe he's blocked you. Um, but this is also, the Page of Swords is talking about a release of a somewhat immature way of approaching the situation. Um, immature immature modes of, of communication. Not necessarily needing to seek um, outside validation anymore. This is really talking about going within to find your answers and your truth. We've got the Seven of Swords here. We've got Temperance. And underneath all of that, we've got the Three of Swords in reverse, okay? Um, so... <laughs> it, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm laughing because there's a bit of a distraction. Whoever's playing music out there, it really got just... It, it, it just got really intense. Like, people are shaking their things. Okay, anyway. Um, so, with the Page of Swords, the Seven in reverse, the Seven of Swords, Temperance, and the Three of Swords in reverse, Temperance here is saying that there's a lot of balancing out going on for the Divine Feminine when it comes to um, deceit and deception. Um, I really feel like the Divine Feminine is coming to terms with or is in the process of needing to come to terms with the fact that, you know, uh, with, with what she has considered to be deception, um, a disloyalty, cheating even. Um, and what Temperance is saying in relation to all of this, it's understanding how um, 
we have perpetuated these things with our thoughts and our beliefs um, and healing aspects of things that you know, cause us to see certain actions or see certain uh, or experience certain events that left us feeling cheated. Um, and we're coming to terms with realizing that we have these core wounds that needed to be healed in order to stop manifesting these elements to our lives, okay? Uh, stop manifesting these, these experiences in our lives, yeah? So let's get into the storyline here. We have... Judgment. All right. So some of you are new to the journey. Welcome. Um, but a lot of us are starting to come to terms with who we, uh, what this true, really hunkering down and getting to the nitty gritty, getting to, um, you know, the, 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 the service aspect, hearing this higher calling and moving fat forward on our, on our paths. Okay. Judgment is coupled with the five of swords in reverse. Excellent. So Divine Feminine, you are in a process, we are in a process of releasing, releasing this fighting energy, okay? The Five of Swords is something that the Divine Feminine has been experiencing for some time, and it's definitely in relation to, um, you know, what we've personally experienced with our Divine Masculines. Um, and what Judgment and the Five of Swords in Reverse is saying is now the Divine Feminine is coming to a, a period where we're starting to understand what is beneath all of this Five of Swords energy and what has been perpetuating it for for on our ends, what has been perpetuating it on the Divine Masculines, and, and now we're rising above this, okay? We're starting to see the bigger picture. We're starting to accept more unconditional love when it comes to this situation when it with our divine masculines and also with the world around us because ultimately it's not our divine masculines that have um done all of these things that have hurt us or given uh, perpetuated these wounds this is societal all right and if you have not reached this period yet you will be reaching this soon okay but this is this is the name of the game right now guys this is what the this is the divine feminine really ascending further okay Next, we have the, oh wow, now the King of Cups is coming up uh, reversed with the Ace of Swords, okay? Again, this is, this is really coming to terms with uh, seeing the bigger picture when it comes to man manipulative relationships, okay? The, the King of Cups in reverse often talks about people that are uh, emotionally uh, manipulative, people that, um, you know, just toy play with our hearts, tore on our, tug on heartstrings and, you know, just do whatever they want. It's, it is a similar energy to me personally. It is a similar energy to the King of Wands in reverse, but with the cups here, it's more emotional. These are love games. These are, um, deceptions and emotions and all that. But the Divine Feminine is coming to terms with all of this. She is understanding, she is seeing the deeper reality around why, um, she has manifested these relationships into her life, um, but also on certain ex to certain extent, why people act in the way they have when it comes to relationships. Why past um, relationships have have crumbled the way they have. Why past lovers have uh, treated them and other people the way that they have. They're, we're really starting to see the bigger picture, see the unconditional love in the situation, and understand that people don't act out in ways, in, in certain ways, without having some sort of personal history or experience behind it to drive them in that way, okay? There's a lot of swords energy here so far. So there's a lot of mental activity happening. There is a lot of clarity that's coming into play, especially with the Ace of Swords here, okay? Moving forward, we have the Ten of Wands with the Seven of Wands, all right? Um, this is, <laughs> yeah, this is feeling the burdens of the journey, okay? Feeling feeling the burden of having to defend oneself, having to, I'm really picking up an energy of needing to defend your, feeling like you need to defend yourself um, when it comes to this journey. Um, and I totally understand that. Um, you know, I, this really has, I, I, I'm i going to be honest with you, as I've been doing, going through my process lately, especially over this past week, on all of the, the thoughts that have been coming out, all the emotions that have been coming up. I mean, we're still in a very purgy state, stage, guys. There is a, 
a lot of purging that's happening. Um, and this will end, but it is generating feelings of burdens, of burdensome, of just, this is just too much to handle, too much to carry. Um, and there it has been an energy, at least for me, I, I, I feel like I've been having to defend myself against really connecting with my divine masculine energetically. And I know that hasn't been the best thing to do. Um, but at the same time, I just heard my grandmother say, yes, it was, Eric, it was the best thing to do because you, I was trying to focus on myself. Now, when I was, when I was energetically blocking my divine masculine, I wasn't doing it from a place that I would have before with this five of swords energy saying to him, um, telepathically or energetically, I'm blocking you because I don't want to know you. No, this time I've been doing it because it's like, I know you, God, I, I want to cry. I feel you reaching out and I know you want to connect with me, but I can't right now. I need to focus on myself. I need to focus on healing these things that are coming up and all this purging that's happening because I don't want to dump all of this on you. I don't want to um, throw all of this energy back at you. So I don't want to connect with you because I'm trying to protect you. <laughs> Okay, and that's, uh, oh God, that is, I mean, that's how I'm resonating with the Ten of Wands and the Seven of Wands. Um, uh, so, but that's kind of the energy that I'm feeling. I feel like that's a lot of what you guys are feeling. Um, and the Ace of Swords here is standing out in relation to this. Here is an aspect of the King of Cups in reverse, this emotional manipulation. Emotional manipulation. Now, if you're resonating with me, really, you are in the process of balancing your masculine and feminine energies. And at this point, you've probably gotten really solid with that, like I have. And so for me to not um, energetically connect with my divine masculine and throw all this bullshit energy at him... Um, is in fact an embodiment, a depiction um, uh, of the King of Cups in reverse with the Ace of Swords. I don't want to be emotionally manipulative. I don't want to to throw all of my emo all of my negative emotions at him to get back at him. Uh, there is nothing to get back at at this time, at this at this moment, because I understand what's going on. I've understood what was going on for a long time, um, and why I acted and reacted in certain ways, why he's reacted in certain ways. Um, but but it was there was still a bunch of resentment here with the five of swords energy. Again, the five of swords is reversed. The king of cups is reversed. Ace of swords is upright. I get it. And so because of that, I don't want to throw all this energy at him, at him anymore. Instead, I will pull back and work on the energy my, uh, myself in order to release it in a healthy and beneficial way. Okay. Finally, for the divine feminine, we have. The Ace of Wands in reverse with the Two of Wands in reverse. Okay, so the Divine Feminine is feeling indecisive. And we knew that, okay? I was just talking about that. Um, 3811, holy moly, 1111. I just saw 3811 on the counter. And three and eight equals 11 in 38 minutes and 11 seconds, 1111. Um, yeah, the Divine Feminine is a bit... Is, is a bit indecisive. She feels a bit blocked. She wants to move forward in her life. I'm, I'm really picking up an energy of, especially with the two of wands here. Where it, there it is, 38, 38, 11, 11, again. Um, with the two of wands here, I'm picking up that some of you may be feeling like, oh, also, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but um, I've been noticing synchronicities like crazy number synchronicities i've been seeing 44 all over the place like I'll, i took a nap today um, before i started this this video and i woke up and music was playing and i wanted to shazam it i look at my phone it's 144 i realized that the building right across from me is 144 i look at my phone and it's like 44% on the on the, uh, battery life on my on my phone for time is 44 something like I, it's it's nuts guys it's nuts um, I just wanted to share that with you guys <laughs> anyway um so I I I feel like there are a lot of divine feminines out there right now 
that are wondering if maybe there's someone else out there for me. Um, this depiction of the Ace of Wands, or the, the, the Ace of Wands and the Two of Wands in reverse is definitely a depiction, a representation of, of divine feminines questioning whether or not a certain person is their twin or not. Um, and I would, I, I, what's coming through right now, a channeled message from the divine, guys, this is gonna be a long video. We're already at 40 minutes and we haven't even gotten to <laughs> the divine masculine, so hunker down. But um, um, there's a channeled message coming through from the divine saying that a, a really great way to know if someone is your, your twin or not is when you are Number one, you're really serious about doing your spirit work and being of service. Um, and the person that you think is your twin is the one that has really pushed you into this, this service, okay? Um, and also, the divine is saying, when you are connecting and doing the things that you're passionate about, doing the things that you truly, truly love that bring so much joy to your life and fulfillment, and when you're connecting and doing your spirit work and your service work, um, and you, you continue, to, as you're doing these things, you feel your connection with your divine masculine or even your divine feminine. This is a, a message for the divine masculine too. That is a sign. That is the universe confirming for you that this person is it. Now, for me, as I've been doing this video for, for us and doing this reading, his name is being repeated in my head constantly. Whenever I'm doing readings for other people, it doesn't even have to be um, a twin flame reading. It could just be a, a general reading, a crew, whatever. His name, they, they, my spirit team just keeps repeating his name. Okay? So this is, in fact, confirmation from your higher self, from the angels, from God, from your spirit team, whatever, that this person is it. <laughs> and at this moment, I just reached in and I was like, is that true, guys? Is this really it? And they just said to me, yes, Eric, this is really it. <laughs> so this is what the Ace of Wands and the Two of Wands in reverse is talking about. Um, if you feel inclined to, to reach out to, to a reader, like I know um, Emily from um, Indigo Moons Healing is offering a service to be able to um, confirm whether someone is your twin or not. If you feel guided to do that, go ahead. I encourage you to do so. But ultimately, your best guide is your higher self. All right? So... You know, follow that first. And if you feel guided to reach out to a reader, I do not offer that service. Okay. Ultimately, I want, I, I think it's best that you, you know, confirm this for yourself. But if you do feel guided to do so, there are people that are out there that, that uh, offer that service. Go right ahead. Okay. All right. So let's get into the divine masculine. We've got the three of cups. Okay. Celebration. Uh, reconciliation is on the divine masculine's mind. That's what I just heard. Um, I'm also picking up some energies of some third parties, but in this situation, this is social, okay? This is not, th I'm really picking up more of a social energy around the divine masculine. Um, let me, yeah, we've got justice, okay? See, look, okay, this is exactly what I was seeing. Justice is here. So there are a lot of divine masculines that are really um, analyzing thinking about the people that they have around them, okay? Who is the, who is in their social social circle and what are they really doing for me? How are they affecting my life is what Divine Masculine is saying. We've got mirroring already, guys. We've got the Page of Swords and she is upright. And this is in your overall energy. So look, the Divine Feminine has the Page of Swords reversed. The Divine Masculine has the Page of Swords upright. So your Divine Masculine, Divine Feminines, may very well be watching you, may very well be, you know, asking about you through friends, may want to know what's going on with you. Um, we have, underneath everything else, we have the chariot, okay? The divine masculine is moving forward in all ways. This is not just moving forward towards you, divine feminine, okay? But divine masculine, you are, I really feel an energy of you taking the move, making the moves, okay? Making those moves in all areas of your life. I see you, Divine Masculine, moving forward in what is truly making you happy. 
I really feel like a lot of you that I'm connecting with have really come to terms with what your truth is. What is your, what is your heart's desire? And my attention is being drawn to the Ace of Swords here in the Divine Feminine's read and that makes sense because we're all we all have masculine and feminine energies so what that is saying to me is you have really come into a place where you're really connecting with your feminine energies divine masculine and that is making you aware of the king of cups energy in reverse but is also making you aware of what you're truly passionate about and with the chariot here underneath everything in your overall energy you're moving forward towards it and that is excellent excellent good for you divine masculine all right Getting into your storyline here, we have the King of Wands in reverse with the Queen of Pentacles. All right, so here we go. We're talking about some karmic relationships here. It's very often that um, people associate the Queen of Pentacles with a karmic partner. The King of Wands in reverse is saying that Divine Masculine, you have come to terms or you are at least coming to an understanding that any sort of, uh, of um um, karmic relationships that you have been in was out of a um, King of Wands reverse aspect. And I find it interesting that the King of Wands is coming out here for the Divine Masculine because while I was talking about it with the, with the Divine Feminine, um, I was saying that to me, the King of Wands and the King of Cups are very similar en energies. All right, so... Um, so for the Divine Masculine, the King of Wands in reverse, to me, talks about someone that just goes after what's they, what they want in a passionate way, but doesn't really take into account how it'll affect them, um, how it'll affect the others. Like in many cases, it could be someone that's doing something just to get over on somebody else or just to get something that they want, completely regardless of how that's going to hurt the other person or even hurt themselves just going after things willy-nilly and not really protecting yourself not really um guarding yourself not you know that kind of thing um so here with the king of wands in reverse and the queen of pentacles divine masculine you are coming into coming to terms with the fact that um a karmic relationship that you might have been in or any anything that's sort of karmic for you that you're analyzing at this time was you acting out of a, a negatively aspected sense now i'm not trying to say that all of you were players um, but you were reversed. You were not truly aware of who you are, what you truly wanted. And so that led you to this karmic relationship. Ultimately, with the Queen of Pentacles upright, ultimately, this karmic relationship was good for you because it helped you understand yourself better. It helped you come to terms with what it is you truly wanted. And when, if you guys remember, um, the when I, I told you before I started the video, I was shuffling the decks and some flyers popped out and it was the Two of Swords reversed with the Ten of Pentacles underneath the deck. So you really are no longer indecisive. You're no longer confused about what it is you truly want in your ultimate family life. And with the Ten of Pentacles there, it was an ending to this situation, okay? Moving forward, we have the Four of Wands. Excellent, Divine Masculine. Union, <laughs> okay, all right, spirit. Union, union is on the divine masculine's mind. You, spirit, really wanted me to say that because, and they're pushing me because I was in resistance towards it because I don't want to make everything about union. I was about to say that you're really putting in some serious, solid foundations, divine masculine, and that's great. But spirit and my grandmother <laughs> was saying to me, Eric, say it. Union is on the divine masculine's mind. Okay. With the Queen of Cups in reverse. So look, guys, we've got some more mirroring, okay? We've got the King of Cups in reverse, and right under it in the Divine Feminine's reading, or energy, and right under that in the Divine Masculine's reading, we have the Queen of Cups in reverse. So, coupled with the Four of Wands here, this is, um, the Divine Masculine wants union, okay? Really, really wants union. But, um, I feel like Divine Masculine especially since you're, because you're connecting with your feminine energies, you're getting caught up in your emotions. You're getting caught up in your feelings, um, especially because you want union. I, gosh, I feel this so strongly in my heart right now. You, Divine Masculine, you really want union, but you kind of feel like you messed it up. And that's really not the case because ultimately, we're all going through this journey together and we're all needing to heal together, okay? So you really haven't messed it up. The, the, the divine is really coming through and saying to you guys, you have not messed it up. But 
Do not hide from your feelings, okay? Feel them. Feel your emotions. You have been blocked from your emotions for so long that there are a lot of, there's a lot of shit. I really feel like there's a lot of shit just rushing at you right now and you don't necessarily know how to handle it. And that is totally understandable. Um, my advice here would be to really rely on your feminine energies, your inner feminine, because she will help guide you through all of this, okay? Um, another thing that's coming through in relation to divine masculine, you feeling like you're mess you've messed it up. Um, you just feel like your divine feminine is not receptive to you, has blocked you, has um, deleted you out of her out of her life. And I'm here to tell you guys, we can't. <laughs> just like you can't, you can't, I mean, you can block us um, like on social media or whatnot. You can cut off communication. But ultimately, you cannot connect, disconnect from us just like we cannot disconnect from you. Um, it's a thing. It really is a thing. And I know in, in previous readings that I've done, you know, for the collective, um, the message was that all is not lost. And that, that message is still coming through here, okay? We don't have any Five of Cups energy yet, but I, I feel that's around. All is not lost. All right, moving forward. We have the, pay, the Knight of Swords in reverse with the Queen of Swords in reverse. Um, ooh, 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 give me a second here. I'm picking up that this is sort of a blockage, something that you feel is a blockage, Divine Masculine. Um, yeah, and this is falling right under the Divine Feminine's energy of a Ten of Wands and the Seven of Wands. So, um, and this is also in relation to what the Queen of Cups in reverse was saying. It's like you feel like your Divine Feminine has completely cut you off. And I guess, Divine Masculine, you're feeling this, this separation. You're feeling this energy of the end of the runner-chaser dynamic. And I feel like some of you are kind of expecting... Are kind of expecting your Divine Feminine to start running after you again. She's not going to do that, guys. I really feel like that the Queen of Swords in Reverse and the Page of Swords, I'm sorry, the Knight of Swords in Reverse is a message from the Divine Feminine to the Divine Masculine that we're not really going to chase after this anymore. Nor should we have to. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to channel the message here and I'm getting chills. Like my, the top of my head is starting to tingle um and i don't want that to sound mean it's not like we're not we're not chasing after this um out of spite or because we're angry we're not we're not chasing after this the way we used to is the message here um we're much more balanced within ourselves we're much more grounded and so now we yeah that's really just the message that's coming through and that i feel divine masculine i do feel some of you are kind of like getting disappointed and dropping in energy i feel that um, this is nothing to be upset about. I, I mean, to be quite honest, um, a lot of us through this runner and chaser dynamic, a lot of the divine feminines have put forward so many messages and tried so many times to connect and <laughs> get to you guys that now we're at the point where we just don't want to do that anymore because it doesn't serve the relationship. It was destructive. It was toxic. So that is why we have the page of the Knight of Swords and the Queen of Swords in reverse. We understand how toxic that has been, and so we're not going to do that anymore. Okay? Finally, in your storyline, Divine Masculine, we have the Three of Wands in reverse with the Nine of Pentacles in reverse. This is insecurities, um, and this is really very interesting. This is, very, this is falling right under the Divine Feminine's part of the Two of Wands in reverse. Some Divine Masculines are, or you, Divine Masculine, you may not necessarily be, be taking steps, which is contradictory to what, um, yeah, we have the chariot here, this is, which was saying that you're moving forward, but this is, again, this is more insecurity, okay? With the Nine of Pentacles in reverse, you feel inadequate. So what this is saying is you're feeling like you cannot make the preparatory steps to bring this 
union into fruition that is that is so much on your mind this is really just an insecurity it's a fear okay um you don't feel like you're adequate enough you don't feel like you you have what it takes to offer what you truly want to offer to your divine feminine and that is not the case at all you guys and I, and I feel like this is mostly from a material point of view um, you may not feel I'm really picking up a message of you don't feel like you have the material finances to provide for your divine feminine in the way that you the way that you want to so this is ego here okay this is your ego telling you that you don't have enough that you're not adequate but that is not the case yes there are still some things you may want to do or accomplish before you get to reconnect with your divine feminine come into union or come into reunion but ultimately you need to understand that you have what it takes all right speaking from speaking personally i mean the way i feel about it my divine masculine really doesn't need to do much else other than show up in a mature way ready to communicate ready for commitment <laughs> um I don't really need any sort of material aspects from him because I know number one, I can, prov I can, I've been providing for myself. Okay. But number two, I know that when we come together and I know that when twins come together, I mean, we're going to manifest like crazy. So it's not even like I need, I personally need him to show up in any sort of material way. Okay. Cause ultimately it's not all about material. So I just want to point out there's a lot of king and queen energy here on the spread, especially for the divine masculine, uh, mainly for the divine masculine, because the divine masculine has the king of wands, the queen of pentacles, the queen of cups, and the queen of swords. I just wanted to point that out. I thought that was pretty cool. Divine masculine, you don't have to feel so inadequate, insecure. Oh, gosh, we love you. And I want to say that even, and, and, I, and I know there are a lot of other divine feminines out there, especially someone, you know, one of my best friends on this journey. She and I both resonate with the fact that regardless of what has happened in the past, we still love our divine masculines unconditionally. And I know for me personally, I still go through these periods of not being sure of, you know, what would happen, you know, should we run into each other? Um, and I still, there is still a little bit, I want, I'll, I will say there is still a little bit of resentment, um, but that's only because we haven't discussed anything. You know, we don't talk to each other. So it's not like I have any sort of um, physical confirmation, uh, you know, other than what I feel energetically, what I hear and experience energetically. So then that, that kind of puts me in a, in a place where I'm like, scared <laughs> of what could happen afraid that you know he is still mad at me or something that he really just never wants to speak to me again um but ultimately i know energetically that that's not the case and that's what the divine tells me it's not the case at all um it's just that it's this it's the nine of pentacles and the three of wands in reverse it's the divine masculine feeling inadequate Especially with the Seven of Swords energy that is still being processed or worked through with the Divine Feminine, a lot of the Divine Masculines are hyper aware of what has happened in the past and how not and and, and this is how you know we 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 help each other because now the Divine Masculine has realized through what has gone on with the Divine Feminine how they have treated others in the past or how their relationships have played out in the past, um, and now they're coming to terms with it. Okay, <laughs> that's all. Let's get into the animal spirit spread. All right, so um, I want to keep this within terms of balance here. So we're going to have one card for the divine masculine energies, one card for the divine feminine energies. Yes, now please take this to understand not only what, how your counterpart or your twin is showing up in the physical, but how this is what this is representing within your masculine and feminine, feminine energies within. Yeah. So for the divine masculine, one card, this one, we have Fox. I feel like that, did that come up last week? Or maybe it came up in a private reading that I did. For the divine feminine, 
this one. We have Dolphin. Ooh. Whoa. Okay. For the shadow dynamic, we have Dragon. And, oh, God, you guys, for the illuminated dynamic, we have Snake. I just want to say, I had a dream. Oh, my goodness. This is definitely a synchronistic event for me. Um, I had a dream about my twin not too long ago. Um, he and I were standing somewhere chatting, you know, having a good time. And it was weird, but we were standing somewhere and I was looking out while we were chatting and there was like this, this channel in the, the ground that dolphins were like swimming through. There were these two dolphins that were swimming towards us in this like, I guess it's a channel. I guess that water could move through. There was no water. It was just, it was like they were, they were shimmying through the mud. And um, it was really cool. And then a few days ago, I was working um, and I look out the window and somebody walks by with two dolphin balloons. <laughs> and now the dolphin is coming out for the Divine Feminine. And I just saw 44 on the, wow. The synchronicities are intense, guys. Please understand that as you experience synchronicities more and more, especially when they're back to back, like they have been for me recently, um, it's just confirmation that you are anchored in the fourth dimension. Um, and these are activations. Okay. If you want more information about that, I highly recommend that you follow Aluna Ash. She is everything guys. I mean, I, I really look forward to, to her videos, not just for, you know, because she does twin flame readings, but also because she just brings so much knowledge forward. I just want to listen to her talk all day long. All right. For the divine masculine energies, we have Fox. Smart, strong partner or mate, wise teacher. The Fox is an enchanting creature with plenty of mystique to go around. Fox personalities are skillful in business and also make great teachers. They are quick to learn and adapt well to new situations. Foxes are ideal life partners as they commit to relationships for the long term and their natural charisma keeps things exciting. Fox energy helps us stay true to those most dear to us. When this card appears, reconnect to those you love. Foxes don't do well when they slip away. When in balance, Fox is magical and an ingenious teacher and monogamous. When out of balance, Fox is sneaky, unsure of their identity. To bring into balance, uh, one must focus on partnership and connection. And that absolutely, that resonates. Um, especially like with, for the divine feminine, with the, the masculine energies within, we have the king of cups, we have the ace of swords with the king of cups in reverse. Um, in relation to the divine feminine or feminine energies, you know, masculinity is really coming to terms with commitment. And then we have here the king of wands in reverse, the king and the queen of pentacles. Um, the divine masculine in their energy is coming to terms with sneaky behavior is what I just heard. Or um, inauthentic, um, um, non-committal, or committing to things that are not um, serving them. Wanting to be able to commit, but needing to choose a relationship or situation that is beneficial for them, that's more gives more to their authenticity. Yeah. All right. Divine Feminine, you have Dolphin. <sighs> dolphin, innately intelligent, healer, light, blessings. The gifts of the Dolphin are beyond what our human minds can grasp. Dolphin personalities are often drawn to the healing arts as they are sensitive to the subtle and enjoy working on the level of spirit. It's easy for dolphin types to underestimate the impact they make in the world. These creatures play such an important role in the wheel of karma that coming in contact with a dolphin type will change the entire course of your day. Dot, 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 dot. And thus your life. This card can also indicate a profound blessing is on the way. When in balance, dolphin is an active healer and a strong spiritual practice, has a strong spiritual practice. When out of balance, dolphin underestimates their own powers. To bring into balance, one must connect with like-minded spirits. So this is definitely connecting or saying, speaking to feminine energies. Feminine energies are healers. Okay. Um, I just, wow. If any of you have been doubting that, I mean, this would be confirmation. So if you have, 
you know, gotten onto this path, you met your divine masculine and you guys went into separation and now you're not communicating and you're questioning whether or not this person really is your twin. If you, if since meeting this person and you've been walking your path and you've been really guided to do some sort of healing work, like for me, tarot readings is how I work through healing. I also can do Reiki. I can feel it. I've always felt it in my body. I just haven't really practiced it yet. Um, but meeting my twin has really propelled me towards doing these things, doing tarot readings, learning about astrology, uh, working towards um, practicing Reiki and all that, and being a healer to people. If, you, if you're resonating with that, and this one person has propelled you forward, hello, they're your twin, guys. Okay? All right. The shadow dynamic is dolphin. I'm sorry, not dolphin, dragon. <laughs> sorry, I'm all, I've got dolphins on the mind now. Dragon, seeing one's most, most true self, balancing the ego. <sighs> Hell yeah, that's the shadow dynamic. <laughs> the dragon sees everything. Its essence has been with us since before our first breath and will be there at our last. It watches us navigate the external world as well as our inner world. When dragon energy is awakened, we are courageous, a visionary, and can easily drop into witness consciousness. It is almost as if we are traveling with a great friend inside of ourselves. When we look in the mirror deep into our eyes, we may even glimpse the self behind the self, the one who is watching us. This is the power of the dragon breathing transformative fire into every cell of our bodies. Witnessing this omnipotent energy, even for a brief moment, helps us surrender and let go. We let the dragon guide us. We hop on its back for a ride, and as we traverse even the most difficult terrain, the dragon's eyes see beauty everywhere. It is said that if a yogi does not see the beauty in the world, their Agni is dim. Agni is described as inner fire or sacred intelligence. May even just the mention of the dragon stir the embers of intelligence within you. Dragon and the third eye chakra. I knew it. I knew it. The subtle energy of the dragon lives at the navel center in the Manipura, Manipura chakra. Manipura translates to, quote, the city of hidden gems. And behind its gates burns the fire of our transformation and digestion. The sages believe health of the fire at the navel center is what governs our ability to clearly, quote, see both the inner and outer dimensions. Um, this is guiding me to let you guys know a lot of this, this purgy energy is coming from us purging out what's going on in our root chakras. And as we purge and cleanse and heal our root chakras, we also purge and cleanse and heal our third eye chakras. Okay. So the message here also is that a lot of us are experiencing an activation and opening of the third eye through all of this purging that we're doing in our root chakras. Yeah. <clears throat> so well, there's that. Finally, the uh, illuminated dynamic is snake, and I really love this card. And I feel like didn't didn't snake come out last week too, guys? Did the divine feminine wasn't the divine feminine represented by snake? I'm gonna have to go back and look now because I think the divine masculine was fox. Don't quote me on that. I could be very very wrong, but I just anyway. <laughs> okay, snake. Guardian of the unawakened, unawakened magic and creative potential. The snake is a symbol of our highest potential. It is said that Shakti, our creative life force, lies dormant at the base of our spine in the form of a coiled snake. Regardless of whether this image rings true for you, it's well worth considering the amount of, quote, unawakened or, quote, untapped potential within. What would life look like if you woke it up? How can you stir it from slumber? An experienced yoga or Medi or meditation meditation teacher can lead the way make haste the snake card appears when there is no more time to waste when in balance snake is prosperous creative and charismatic when out of balance snake starts and stops many things to bring into balance one must 
practice kundalini yoga and meditation. All right, guys, so the animals are speaking the truth right now, as they always do. But the snake and dragon are absolutely talking about what I was mentioning about this um, third eye chakra and root chakra awakening, okay? If you follow Aluna Ash, um, sir, go through some of her videos and try and find um, her videos where she talks about uh, her sh the Shakti meditation that she has been talking about. It's basically, um, and actually this is something that I've been doing regularly. Like I, I meditate regularly every day, um, but I have added this meditation, this practice. Oh, sorry guys, I just kicked the table so the camera's shaking. I added this practice into it and... Yeah, uh, I've been feeling a lot of third eye activations. Um, you visualize a ball of light at the, uh, like within your pelvis, like at the base of your spine, like started at the root chakra. With your in breath, um, breathe it up your spine and go bring it up as far as you can. But with your out breath, bring it back down. And that is, that will help you clear blockages. Um, within your chakra system and that will also help you raise your kundalini energy and as you do this repetitively um excuse me as you do this repetitively repetitively uh it visualize it moving further and further up okay i actually feel it moving um and it's so cool it is a really intense um um sensation 111 guys 11101 woo um but so this is the call now um it's time to start doing this kind of thing. It's time to start raising our kundalini energy. It's time to start really focusing on clearing the blockages out of our chakra systems so that we really can represent ourselves in the most authentic way, so that we can remove all these blockages and really continue with this purging that's happening um, so that we can move forward on our journeys. Yeah? All right, guys, there it is. This was really a beautiful reading. Um, it's a long one, <laughs> but I love you guys so much. Take care, and I look forward to connecting with you guys again soon, 1144, oh my goodness, on the counter soon for our next conversation, yeah? Mwah! Love you guys. Bye.